welcome back in part 9 of BBC. BBC Studios, formerly BBC Worldwide, is a wholly owned commercial subsidiary of the BBC, responsible for the commercial exploitation of BBC programs and other properties, including a number of television stations throughout the world. It was formed following the restructuring of its predecessor, BBC Enterprises, in 1995. The company owns and administers a number of commercial stations around the world operating in a number of territories and on a number of different platforms. <laughs> the channel BBC Entertainment shows current and archive entertainment programming to viewers in Europe, Africa, Asia and the Middle East, with the BBC Studios channels BBC America. Joint venture with AMC Networks and BBC Canada. Joint venture with Chorus Entertainment, showing similar programming in the North America region and BBC UK TV in the Australasia region. <sighs> The company also airs two channels, aimed at children, an international CBBS channel and BBC Kids, a joint venture with Knowledge Network Corporation, which shares programs under the CBBS and BBC K brands. <laughs> The company also runs the channel's BBC Knowledge, Broadcasting Factual and Learning Programs, and BBC Lifestyle. Broadcasting Programs, based on themes of food, style and welcome. In addition to this, BBC Studios runs an international version of the channel BBC HD, and provides HD simulcasts of the channel's BBC Knowledge and BBC America. BBC Studios also distributes the 24-hour international news channel BBC World News. <laughs> The station is separate from BBC Studios to maintain the station's neutral point of view, but is distributed by BBC Studios. <sighs> the channel itself is the oldest surviving entity of its kind, and has 50 foreign news bureaus and correspondents in nearly all countries in the world. As officially surveyed, it is available to more than 294 million households, significantly more than CNN's estimated 200 million. In addition to these international channels, BBC Studios also owns the UK TV network of seven channels. <laughs> These channels contain BBC archive programming to be rebroadcast on their respective channels, Alibi, Crime Dramas, Dave, Slogan, The Home of Witty Panther. Drama, Drama, launched in 2013, Eden, Nature, Gold, Comedy, W, Entertainment, and Yesterday, History Programming. In addition to these channels, many BBC programs are sold via BBC Studios to foreign television stations with comedy, documentaries, crime dramas such as Luther and Peaky Blinders, and historical drama productions, being the most popular. <laughs> The BBC's most successful reality television show format, Strictly Come Dancing, under the title Dancing with the Stars, has been exported to 60 other countries. In addition, BBC Television News appears nightly on many public broadcasting service stations in the United States, as do runs of BBC programs such as EastEnders and in New Zealand on TVNZ1. In addition to programming, BBC Studios produces material to accompany programs. <laughs> the company maintains the publishing arm of the BBC, BBC Magazines, which published the Radio Times as well as a number of magazines that support BBC programming such as BBC Top Gear, BBC Good Food, BBC Sky at Night, BBC History, BBC Wildlife and BBC Music. <sighs> BBC Magazines was sold to Exponent Private Equity in 2011, which merged it with Origin Publishing, previously owned by BBC Worldwide between 2004 and 2006, to form Media Media Company. 
BBC Studios also publishes books. Your company programs such as Doctor Who under the BBC Books brand, a publishing imprint majority owned by Random House. <laughs> Soundtrack albums, talking books, and sections of radio broadcasts are also sold under the brand BBC Records. With DVDs also being sold and licensed in large quantities to consumers both in the UK and abroad under the two entertain brand. Archive programming and classical music recordings are sold under the brand BBC Legends. Until the development, popularization, and domination of television, radio was the broadcast medium upon which people in the United Kingdom relied. <laughs> It reached into every home in the land and simultaneously united the nation, an important factor during the Second World War. <sighs> the BBC introduced the world's first high-definition 405 line television service in 1936. <laughs> it suspended its television service during the Second World War and until 1946 but remained the only television broadcaster in the UK until 1955. When independent television, ITV, began operating. This heralded the transformation of television into a popular and dominant medium. <laughs> Nevertheless, throughout the 1950s radio still remained the dominant source of broadcast comedy. <sighs> Further, the BBC was the only legal radio broadcaster until 1968, when URY obtained its first license. Despite the advent of commercial television and radio, with competition from ITV, Channel 4 and Sky, the BBC has remained one of the main elements in British popular culture through its obligation to produce TV and radio programs for mass audiences. <laughs> However, the arrival of BBC Two allowed the BBC also to make programs for minority interests in drama, documentaries, current affairs, entertainment, and sport. Examples cited include the television series Civilization, Doctor Who, I, Claudius, Monty Python's Flying Circus, Hot Black, and Tonight, but other examples can be given in each of these fields as shown by the BBC's entries in the British Film Institute's 2000 list of the 100 greatest British television programs. With the BBC's 1970s sitcom Faulty Towers, featuring John Cleese as Basil Faulty, topping the list. <laughs> Top of the Pops, the world's longest-running weekly music show, first aired in January 1964, The Rolling Stones, being the first performers on it. <sighs> on air, since 22 August 1964, Match of the Day is broadcast on Saturday nights during the Premier League season. <laughs> Some BBC shows have had a direct impact on society. For example, the Great British Day Off is credited with reinvigorating interest in baking throughout the UK, with stores reporting sharp rises in sales of baking ingredients and accessories. <laughs> the export of BBC programs through services like the BBC World Service and BBC World News, as well as through the channels operated by BBC Studios, means that audiences can consume BBC productions worldwide. Oh. Long-running BBC shows include Desert Island Discs, broadcast on radio since 1942, Panorama, broadcast on BBC television since 1953. It is the world's longest-running news television program. The British Academy Film Awards, the AFTAs, was first broadcast on the BBC in 1956 with Vivian Wee as the host. <laughs> The television equivalent, the British Academy Television Awards, has been screened exclusively on the BBC since a 2007 awards ceremony that included wins for Jim Broadbent, Best Actor, and Ricky Gervais, Best Comedy Performance. The current 
term, P.E.C. English, was used as an alternative name for received pronunciation, and the English Pronouncing Dictionary uses the term P.E.C. Pronunciation to label its recommendations. However, the BBC itself now makes more use of regional accents in order to reflect the diversity of the UK while continuing to expect clarity and fluency of its presenters. From its start sheet beginnings, the BBC has also become more inclusive and now attempts to accommodate the interests of all strata of society and all minorities because they all pay a license fee. Older domestic UK audiences often refer to the BBC as the Beeb, a nickname originally coined by Peter Sellers on the Goon Show in the 1950s when he referred to the BBC. It was then borrowed, shortened, and popularized by radio DJ Kenny Everett. <sighs> David Bowie's recording sessions at the BBC were released as Bowie at the Beep, while Queen's recording sessions with the BBC were released as at the Beep. Another nickname, now less commonly used, is Auntie, said to originate from the old-fashioned Auntie Knows Best attitude, or the idea of aunties and uncles who are present in the background of one's life. But possibly a reference to the aunties and uncles who presented children's programs in the early days, in the days when John Reith, the BBC's first director general, was in charge. The term auntie for the BBC is often credited to radio this jockey Jack Jackson. <laughs> To celebrate the 50th anniversary of the BBC, the song on T was released in We will continue about BBC in final part, which is part 10. So stay tuned for the final part. <laughs>